I've had a tablet computer for a while now. I got my first one, a Hewlett Packard touchpad, if you can remember those, back when I was living abroad in Ukraine. I'd seen a friend with an iPad, the very first generation, and I thought this device was really interesting. The idea of a computer, but without the keyboard, just the essentials, the screen, uh, highly portable, great battery life. Um, it really appealed to me. And considering I couldn't get hold of books in English at the time, it was a really great way to read on the go and consume content. Of course, getting one of those devices made me want to use it more and more. And so I wondered, could this device, could a tablet replace uh, my laptop and become my only computing device? Would it be possible to use a tablet and nothing else? I tried over the years and I upgraded eventually to an iPad Air, but nothing quite fulfilled that promise of the only computing device you need being a tablet. However, Apple recently announced the iPad Pro 2, the second generation of its iPad Pro line, in coming in at 10.5 and 12.9 inches, as well as the promise of iOS 11 in the future. This made me wonder again, could an iPad replace my laptop? Could it become my main or my only computing device? So, I picked one up. The uh, new iPad Pros come in at two interesting sizes. This one is 10.5, it's the smaller of the two. There is also a larger 12.9. 10.5 is actually bigger than the old iPads. They used to be 9.7 for the standard size. Though it's bigger, the screen is significantly bigger. The actual device isn't much bigger. That's because the bezels have been shrunk quite a lot. There's still a bezel, but it's much smaller. The device is lighter than my old iPad Air, but equivalent to the iPad Pro and the iPad Air 2 in terms of weight. It still keeps that amazing eight hour battery life or more sometimes, depending on how you use it. And like all iPads, if you don't use it and you just leave it on the side, its battery goes down very slowly thanks to the features in the operating system which help it preserve battery life. That's what I really like about uh, tablets is that they're a device that you can take out, use all day, but not think about the battery. Anyway, the screen is something that we've got to talk about. This is the new or wider color gambit screen. So the colors are really bright and vibrant. And also it has this feature of ProMotion. What ProMotion means is that it's really smooth when you go. So it looks like it's sticking to your finger a lot more than other, app, uh, than other screens in the past. That's because it changes the refresh rate. When you're just looking at it like this, it's down to a slow 30 hertz, uh, 30 frames per second. However, as you touch and slide, it speeds up to 120 megahertz, uh, 120 hertz, 120 frames per second. However, if you're watching a film, which is at 24 frames per second, it will slow down to 24 frames per second, rather than trying to upscale and creating a weird look. Um, if you are watching something at 60 hertz uh, frames per second, it will go at 60 frames per second. Um, this means that it uses less battery power when it's just stationary like this, but can also uh, still give you that really buttery smooth scrolling. Apparently some people have reported that this makes them feel a bit nauseous, so you can turn it off if that applies to you. Another feature which makes this device feel even faster than before is the new generation of Touch ID sensors. This makes it super fast for logging in. You just touch your finger and it's almost unlocked before you can. When you do it to wake, see, it's so fast that trying to not unlock is a challenge sometimes. 
if you just do it for a very short time, it will still unlock. So that's how fast it is. It makes getting into your device get so quick. And that's another thing that adds to the speed. When you add in the four gigabytes of RAM that this is now packing, that means that the whole device feels really quick, really smooth, and really fast. It's faster than a standard laptop can feel sometimes. There's also a few power apps that are coming out now which will help use those features, stuff like Affinity Photo, or Ulysses for amazing text editing, Concepts for drawing, and uh, Ferrite for recording audio as well. Of course, you can't talk about the new iPad Pro without talking about the accessories, such as the smart keyboard. The smart keyboard makes use of the smart connector, these three dots here. I thought the smart connector was going to be more interesting than it is in the end. To be honest, its position is a bit strange. Sometimes I feel those three dots when I don't have the, connect, uh, the case connected and it feels a bit weird. However, the nice thing about having the smart connector is you don't have to worry about the power in a Bluetooth keyboard. Set up the keyboard, you put it around like this. It comes only in one position and it's not the firmest position in the world, uh, firmest keyboard in the world. It doesn't give you a completely solid base. Typing on your lap, it's not the most enjoyable experience. The keys are quite smooth and loud. They give a pretty good click, which people will hear. And they do have some cushioning, but not loads of cushioning. If you're looking for a really enjoyable, really soft keyboard experience, this is not it. There are better keyboards out there, mechanical keyboards or the Apple Magic keyboard, depending on your taste. So, uh, however, what it does provide you is with a really great on the go keyboard. If you need to do a little bit of typing in a coffee shop or at your desk, while you're out at a business meeting or in a meeting, then this is a really great choice. The key size is great. You don't really have to worry about where your fingers land naturally. It's not too cramped. Unlike my old uh, Bluetooth keyboard for the 9.7 device, this does feel a lot more spaced down. One feature I would love to see on this is more um, specific iOS controls built in. There is only the uh, language switcher as well as some control and option, uh, as well as the usual control option command keys. But there's nothing like a home button which would help to get back to the home screen or volume controls or anything like this. Which is a shame considering that many Bluetooth keyboards have some of these features built into them now as well. Still, the home key is close by and it also, that also has touch ID, which is useful. You don't have touch ID on a smart keyboard yet. Of course, the other accessory to talk about is the Apple Pencil. The Apple Pencil is a really fun and enjoyable device to use and it's something that I think even non-designers and non-photographers will find interesting and useful. It provides you with a new way of interacting with the device and it's a very natural way of interacting. We've all had pencils for a long time, using them to make notes, mark documents, and so we're all quite used to holding things in our fingers. It can actually be really fun and enjoyable to scroll through web pages using the pencil as the thing to guide through and using the pencil to tap on certain interface buttons. Sometimes people design those interface buttons far too small, especially mobile websites, I'm looking at you. And so using the Apple Pencil to touch them is a really great way to move around. Of course, if you are a designer or a photographer, then having the pencil is truly wonderful. It makes it so much more natural and the pressure sensitivity makes it really great for interacting directly on the screen. I tried using the pencil from 53 for a long time. I used it for making simple sketches and doodles and that was great. However, it wasn't perfect and it left a lot to be desired. It was still a fun device, I still recommend it to people, but the Apple Pencil is on a completely different level. It's not like using a normal pencil or paper and it won't make you a great designer or anything like this. However, 
If you're interested in typography or sketch noting sermons or just editing up photos, then using a pencil is a great way to do it. Overall, the iPad still has a lot of ways to go, a lot of areas to improve in, and I don't know if it could replace your main device. There's a lot of software which isn't available on the iPad still. This weekend, I ran into a problem where I was trying to use CoSchedule, and I was trying to edit some of the, the text helpers. However, I just couldn't do it because I was using a mobile device, and the website designer hadn't made it accessible for a mobile device yet. And that's the sort of problems that you find when you're trying to use an iPad to do things. Some aspects of WordPress aren't friendly towards uh, mobile devices, even though you can very well run a WordPress website using just an iPad. So there are all these little frustrations and there are some software lacking. So for some people, this app will absolutely replace your main computing device. Other people, it won't yet, and maybe it never will. Maybe for your job, there is a better device. Maybe if you're a coder, you'll never find the right thing for you on an iPad. However, I think for most people, if you're looking for a personal computing device, one which is, provides you all the great apps that you'd find on a phone, as well as a bigger screen, great battery life that you don't have to think about, and some great accessories, then the iPad Pro 10.5 is a really great device to consider. I love mine, it's my main computing device, and it's great, I think. However, that may not be the case for you. It's something that you will have to decide and work out on your own. I hope you've enjoyed this review, and I'd love to know if you do pick one up. So you can find me on Twitter at, at Mr. Chris J. Wilson, uh, J as in the letter rather than the name. Um, and you can check out more great stuff at ChurchMag, um, the website that's churchm.ag.